So for the series and sequences, the uh, beginning is the same. You start with the limit. For a while, we'll be doing exactly the same thing all the time. So we're gonna figure out that the limit of k, k plus five, k plus three squared as k goes to infinity, like so. For now, we just learned a divergence test. And here's the difference between sequences and series. While sequence is a list, so it has some A1, A2, A3, and so on. Series is a sum. So it's A1 plus A2 plus A3 and so on. So they behave differently. For sequence, limit will be enough to know the convergence or divergence. For the series, it's not enough. But we still start with a limit. It's just a convenient way to start the problem, even for series. Let's distribute. If you don't remember how to do limits, usually we perform some kind of distribution to see what's going on. K squared plus five K at the numerator. Denominator, you could leave it as it is, or you can distribute, not distribute, we're using square of some formula, K squared plus six K plus nine, the square of some formula. And then this is how I teach these problems. At infinity, find the leader of the polynomial at the numerator at the top, find the leader at the bottom and compare their powers. If they have the same powers, exponents, then the answer will be the ratio of the leading coefficient, which is one over one in this case, one over one. Technically speaking, we can write down like this. It's the same as the limit at infinity, that's only at infinity of k squared over k squared, leader over the leader. So k squared over k squared is one over one, which is one. Now it's the most important is to know what this answer means. So for the sequence and on the exam, you will see questions like this, uh, the same term, but what, are you, what can you say about sequence versus series? For sequence, answer converges, converges to one. For uh -oh. series, no. For series, it's not the same thing. So I will do. Okay. And that's because from the divergent test, it doesn't equal zero? Yes, exactly. Good job. Okay. For series, um, you check the divergence test. Divergence test, which says, if limit of a n when n goes to infinity, I call them tails because it's like the ends of the series, do not give you zero, then for sure the series diverges or blows up. Diverges. So the answer for series, it will be divergence. However, divergence uh, theorem does not show if it converges. So if it was zero, then it's not inf enough information to claim that the series converges. Then we're gonna teach you more tests in the next chapter, the um, ratio test and everything, stuff like that. So that's important. For series, it's more complicated. When we have a sum, when we're working with a sum, it is not as simple. Visually, I can show you what it means. Visually, it looks like so. The for se sequence, for sequence, we have a list of uh, data. So it starts here and here and here, and then it stucks at one, like so. So we say, oh yeah, if the limit gives you one, that means no matter how they were jumping before, now it shrinks to level one. And we say sequence, uh, indeed the sequence, it's just list of data converges to one. So that's just dots, the dots. But the series does not just look at the dots. The series actually looks at heights. This height and this height and this height plus this height plus this plus this plus this. So if it's adding infinitely many heights of level one or anything not zero, 
it definitely blows up. So sequence is a pattern, why series, it's the sum of all of those numbers. So in the green, it will be series. 